I'm Len Tillum. I'm a lawyer. I used to be on the radio. Some of you may remember the show. I was on KGO for years. I did radio for 23 years. Things come to an end. It's over. But I'm still around. I still practice law in Sonoma. And I thought I would try doing these videos on YouTube, covering topics that should be of interest to you. I enjoy doing this. And um, we'll even throw in a few jokes and humor, just like the old days on the radio. So today's topic is going to be who gets your stuff when you die? And I guess we know this, but everybody watching this video and everybody not watching this video, stay calm when you hear this, is going to die, right? That's the way it is. You're born, you live, you die. End of the story. So who gets all your tchotchkes, your humble figurines, all that crap you have in your house? What you got in the bank? Who gets it? You want to give it to the government? You want to give it to a stranger? You want to give it to your junkie son? No! You want to give it to the people you love who will take care of it. And God forbid you got a kid with problems, emotional problems, physical problems. You want to take care of that child, that loved one. But you want to do it with a little wisdom, with a little intelligence, so that, well, we're going to you know what I'm talking about. We'll explain all those so that's. So as soon as people hear wills, especially husbands, they panic. They don't, people don't even want to come into my office, husbands especially, because they're afraid they do a will or they do a trust. Tomorrow they'll be dead. I'm telling you, that goes on. So uh, since you're going to die anyway, you won't die by listening to this video. Maybe you'll, you'll fall asleep from boredom. But if you're getting older, you're not sleeping so good anyway, so I'm doing you a favor altogether. Who needs a will or who should think about it? Okay, start with the young ones. Couples in their 20s and 30s, they've got a couple of kids, they've got one kid. Finally, when the kids are three years old, the wife's mother takes the kids and the couple gets to be alone. They fly to Hawaii on their own vacation. At last they can do it. And of course, they're both thinking, oh my God, what if the plane falls out of the sky and we're dead? You know, we get killed. It doesn't happen. They don't have those things anymore, but everybody worries about it. What if the plane falls out of the sky? So if God forbid that happens, the law in all its wisdom, this assumes you've put nothing in place. The law in all its wisdom will give the money to your children when they're 18. The problem with that is your son or daughter, when it comes to money, nowadays an 18-year-old kid is as dumb as a rock. Your son will say, let's say grandma's raising him because you're dead. Your son will say to your mother, hey, grandma, give me my mother's money. I want to buy a ninja motorcycle. Well, the daughter will say, you know, give me my mother's money. I want to buy my boyfriend a Corvette so we can discover ourselves in America. Eight, or else at 18, who knows how much pot and marijuana they can buy? a lot. You don't want that to happen. So you want some protection in there. Because if you've got nothing, they get it automatically. They're adults according to the law. We know better. So if you do a will, you can put that in. Let's say a middle-aged couple. You're in your 40s or 50s. You're going to be around, you know, it's not a big deal living to be 80 anymore. You're going to be around for a while. But you've got older parents. If they die with nothing in place, they've got assets, but no trust or will, you have to go to court for probate. It's a big problem. If you've got a brother who's got a gambling problem, you know, your oldest brother, or he's a drunk, or something's going on, he owes a fortune to the government, he's going to get his share outright, and it's gone. So a little planning there, and you do want to avoid probate. And if you're a married couple, and you've been married for 40, 50 years, you know, forever, one of you will die first. You ain't Romeo and Juliet. Guys die first. Men usually marry women who are younger than they are by about six, seven years, and women outlive guys. If you go to a function of people in their 80s, it's mostly ladies. The guys are underground. So the wife outlives the husband, and everything will go to her because everything's in both your names. It's been commingled forever. But when she dies, there's a problem. And you want something in place that says what you want. The simplest thing that young couples, middle-aged couples can do, or see that their parents do, or older people can do, is a will. It works. A will is a letter to the judge. It says, dear judge, I'm dead. 
here's what I want you to do with my stuff when I die. You know, however you're going to do it. It's a three or four page document. It's simple. It's only effective when you die. You know, if they catch you walking down Main Street, lady, in a nightgown with an egg on your head, oh, God forbid that happens to you or to me, but if it happens and you only have a will, who's going to pay the doctor bills? Who's going to help take care of you? You've got to go to court for conservatorship. Wills do not cover that. The court gets involved. That's another. You know what? Conservatorships will be another video. I'm going to do a bunch of them. But if you've got a will, it, it's only effective when you die. So let's say you've got a will. Well, in order to get a will, in order to get a will, you've got to go to a lawyer. And wills are known as lawyers' social security because there's a big payoff for the lawyer when you die. I'm going to talk about probate and all of those problems. That's what this video is about. A will is not expensive. Macy's puts a pair of shoes on sale, so you'll go upstairs and buy a couch. The couch for the lawyer is the probate. You do a will in the lawyer's office, two, three hundred dollars. Husband and wife each need their own will. You should not do a husband and wife joint will. Big problems. So you each get a will, and when it's over and the, you're signing the will, the lawyer looks at you and says, you know something? I'm going to teach you the tricks of the trade here. You know, when you die, the court will want the original will. There's no such thing as a Xerox. They don't want no Xerox. They want the original. And lady, you're dead. Who knows where you put the original? So the lawyer will look at you and say, why don't you let me keep the original? I'll keep it safe. And I'll stamp the copy. The original is in the safe deposit box of Len Tillman Associates for safekeeping. So you die. And the kids want the money. Sell the house and give me the money. They do not want to move into your house. They don't want your old couch that the cat slept on. They're going to have some good garage sale. Your stuff will be sold to strangers. Maybe they'll keep the photographs and some other things. Count on it. There's going to be a garage sale in your driveway. Sell the house. Give me the money. The reason your daughter-in-law goes to work five days a week is not that she doesn't love her children, your grandchildren. It's that everything nowadays costs a fortune. The bungalow you paid $2,500 for in 1968 now costs $650,000. I don't know if we're richer, but real estate has gone up in price. So sell the house, give me the money. So they look at the will and they say, look at this. This guy, Len Tillum, has the original. He knew mom and dad. Let's go talk to him. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. First thing that happens when they come into me is we'll say nice things about you. Even if the lawyer doesn't remember you, even if he only did a will, I'm telling you, they'll say nice things about you. And we'll talk about probate, how you have to go to court to take care of it. And if you raised your kids right, I'm sure you did, they will say to the lawyer, how much will it cost? You know, I'm a little jealous. You can't ask a doctor. Doctor says, I'm going to take out your pancreas or give you a new hip. You say, please, let me give you a check. You never ask the doctor how much it'll cost. But a lawyer, how much will it cost? And the lawyer will look at the kids. He's talking about probate and says, oh, the fees are fixed by statute. Listen to this. The lawyers control the legislature, so the fees are fixed by statute. This is in California. It's a real racket. If I probate a $100,000 estate, let's say you can find a house in California now that's worth $100,000, the fees, according to the law, are 4%. The lawyer gets four grand. If I probate a million dollar house, and there are lots of them around now, if I probate a million dollar house, the fee is $23,000. As a lawyer, that's a good deal. Because when I probate a $100,000 house and make four grand, or I probate a million dollar house and make $23,000, I have to type a different address on the petition. You would like that job. Probate is a good deal for lawyers. If you're lucky, you outlive your clients. If you're not lucky, you die before your clients. Some other lawyer will get the work. Probate, nice thing for lawyers. Some other problems from your point of view with a probate. It's expensive. It's a public document. If I asked you for your social security number, you would look at me like I'm an ax murderer. I'm not giving you my social security number. Are you crazy? I wouldn't give it to you. You'll steal my identity. I don't want your social security number. I want your probate. But when you do a probate, let's say your name is Harriet Jones and you're dead. 
Some creepy guy or woman goes to the clerk of the court in your county and says, let me see the file for the estate of Harriet Jones. All of a sudden, it's a public document. Everything you had is there for this creep to look at, this lowlife. Your social security number, your account numbers, who's getting what, their addresses, their names, how much you have, who you're disinheriting. Public documents, you don't want that. Okay, it's a public document and it takes two or three years. And by the way, while it's going on, if the kids want to sell the house, the lawyer does something in probate, he reads a few papers, and he charges another thousand dollars for extraordinary services. You know, they've got to read all those um, escrow papers. The ones that when you refinanced your house, you never read. I got news for you. The lawyer will charge you for that, but he's not going to read them either. He or she, are you kidding? Who reads that stuff? Sign here. Even lawyers do that. So it takes a long time. See, woman shows up in court and says, help. My husband just left me and the kids are starving. That takes precedence. Criminal cases, criminals, they've got a right to a speedy trial. You got a right to a slow probate. That's what you got and that's it. Two or three years, takes a long time, public documents, it's expensive and you don't need it. Really, if you own a house in California, you want to do a trust. Next video, I'm going to talk about trusts. I hope I've convinced you that you don't want a will. By the way, we've got a website right there. It's lentillum.com. I write columns about elder advocate. They're in a bunch of newspapers. I've got information there. If you send me an email, we will answer your emails. We do trusts and estates, litigation, trust litigation. You know, your brother is the trustee or manager and he's ripping off the estate. We do litigation involving automobile accidents, medical malpractice, product liability. Check out the webpage, lentillum.com. There's lots of information there. And if you like this video, there's a place you can say yeah and click something that says yes, I like this video. God forbid you should do that. It's not going to cost you anything. We're going to do more videos. Why don't you tell a friend about this also? I'm Len Tillum. I'm a lawyer and I want to be your video lawyer.